it's Jessie V, and in today's video, I'm going to be telling you the very dark origins of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. As you guys know, on this channel, I like to tell you the dark history of fairy tales, nursery rhymes, stories that you were told as a kid that have a very dark underlying story. So I actually don't really have any announcements today, which is kind of surprising. The only thing to keep an eye out is that we restocked the Light Up Aliens. We have way more on the website now because they sold out so quickly, and that's the only like new thing to announce today. So if you would like one of those, I have linked it down below. But yeah, let's get right into today's video. So Goldilocks and the Three Bears is a 19th century British fairy tale and three versions of the story exist. So I'm going to start off by quickly summarizing the version that we probably all know and were told as kids. A little girl named Goldilocks goes for a walk in the forest. She comes upon a house, knocks on the door, and when nobody answers it, she walks right in. Then she sees three bowls of porridge on the table and you guys know how it goes. One is too hot, one is too cold, and one is just right. So she eats all of it up and afterwards she starts to feel tired. So she goes around the house and finds three chairs. The first two chairs are too big, the third one's just right, but as she actually sits down in the chair, it breaks. Then she moves on to the bedroom where she finds three beds and just like before, one bed's too hard, one bed's too soft, and one bed is just right. So she lies down and falls asleep, but then the family of bears return home Home. They see what happened to their porch, they see what happened to the chairs, and they find Goldilocks lying in the bed. The girl wakes up frightened, sees the bear staring at her, and she runs out of the house. Now, I thought that that was the only version of the story that existed, but I was very wrong. And comment down below if you know this story. I feel like everybody knows Goldilocks and the Three Bears, but if you don't, let me know. So let's talk about version number one, which came out in 1831. Now, this was written by Eleanor Muir, and it was actually first meant to be a handmade book for her nephew, so no one else was supposed to see it. She just wrote the story for someone in her family, and all the pages were actually illustrated with watercolor. Now, the story takes place at the Cecil Lodge, which is a real place in Hertfordshire, England. Now, in this original story, the bears were not a family. They were just friends, and they all lived together in this very fancy house. They basically lived in a giant fancy mansion. Now, instead of a little girl, the house was actually invaded by this creepy old woman. The bears were out one day, she snuck inside the house, and she goes through all of their things, she eats their food, she breaks a bunch of their furniture and decor. She basically just walks around and makes a huge mess and ruins everything. Well, this is where the story gets a little bit disturbing. The bears come home and are furious by the state of their house. So the old lady goes and hides and hopes that the bears won't find her. They start looking for her all over the house and they're like, where are you? We're gonna find you. And finally they find her hiding in the closet. Now it literally says they dragged her out screaming in fear. First they decided to throw her onto the fire, but for some reason she wouldn't burn. And all of this is illustrated by the way in a children's book for her young nephew at first. Then since that didn't work, they tried to drown her, but she just kept holding her breath and it wasn't working. So this old lady just won't die basically. So as their last option to punish her, they went outside and tossed her on top of St. Paul's Churchyard steeple. And this is also a real place and it has a really pointy top like most churches do. And the story ends by saying that even to this day, if you go to this church and look up at the steeple really closely, you will see her there stuck, just screaming in fear. What a disturbing story. That is the original version of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Okay, so then we have version two from from 1837. This was written by a poet named Robert Selfie. Now he was the first person to ever describe what the bears looked like. It says that the first one was a little small wee bear, then you have middle bear, and then you have great huge bear. So small, medium, very large. The story has no illustrations, but the bear's size is represented by typography. So great huge bear is in large gothic letters, little small bear is in small italics, medium bear is in a 
medium font, like they're all represented by fonts. There's no pictures. So there's also a creepy old lady in this story, but unlike the very first story, the bears don't try to punish the old lady. Instead, they scare her. She runs and jumps out of a window. And the story ends by saying that she either broke her neck and died, or she survived the fall, but then was sent to an insane asylum. So both endings are still very strange and still very horrible for this old woman. She either broke her neck and died, or she went to a horrible insane asylum. Huh. So that's the second story, and then we have version three. And this story came out in 1850, so all of these three tales come from like the early 1800s and end in the mid 1800s. So in the first two stories, there was a creepy old lady. Well, finally in this version, they talk about a little girl. Now, instead of Goldilocks, her name was Silver Hair. And the writer for this one said he was tired of seeing old women being talked about in all of these stories. He finally wanted to introduce a new character. So he took the silver hair from the old woman, put it on a little girl, and called her Silver Hair. And this was more of the classic version that we know where she breaks in, eats the porridge, sits on the chairs, tries out the bed. And then finally in more modern times, they changed her from Silver Hair to Goldilocks. Now I was trying to figure out the moral of this story while doing research for this because I found it just so bizarre that someone would make this story into a kid's tale. But the moral of the story is to respect the privacy and property of others because your actions can hurt them. So obviously when Goldilocks just breaks into their house, that's like wrong. She destroys their property, ruins everything. And then she really runs away with no punishment in the version that we know. Obviously in the first two versions, that's not the case. When she enters the bear's house and eats their food and uses their furniture, she is also very selfish. And so that's what they were trying to teach kids back in the day. And I think the moral still kind of holds up nowadays. It's funny because when I was a kid hearing this story, I was actually on Goldilocks side and I was like worried for her that the bears were gonna like eat her But now as an adult, I'm definitely on the bear side like she broke into their house. What the heck? Anyway, so guys those are the three original tales of Goldilocks The first two are definitely very disturbing comment down below if you've heard of those versions because I have never heard of that until today Anyways, so guys comment down below if I missed any creepy old facts about Goldilocks And if you want me to continue this series telling you the dark versions of fairy Fairy tales and nursery rhymes, give this video a thumbs up and let me know. And if you want any of the new light up aliens, I have linked them down below. But I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!